Hi, I'm John Combs. I'm here to give you a little director's cut of the Kickstarter trailer we did for Human Resources. And by director's cut, we mean I'm going to walk through the video and kind of give you an idea of why we chose the shots we have and kind of how the game will play out as an actual game as we walk through the video. So we'll start it here and you'll see that uh, when we talk about the machine apocalypse raged across the planet. Desperate for a countermeasure, we summon the Ancient Ones. Human scientists summon the Ancient Ones, actually. And then, oops. So what the oops conveys is that the game is not entirely serious. It has a little bit of tongue-in-cheekness. It's uh, not super like, oh my god, the world is ending and everything bad's happening. Yeah, the world's ending and everything bad's happening, but yeah, we're going to have a little fun with it. So getting into the game, let me talk about what the game is. The game is a hybrid annihilation style game and a Command and Conquer style game. I did a game called uh, Command and Conquer General Zero Hour uh, a number of years ago. Uh, I started out at Westwood Studios, so I was very much into the Command and Conquer world and how those games play out and how those are designed. And then in 2005, when I left EA and moved to Gas Powered Games, I worked on Supreme Commander. And I recently helped out with the Planetary Annihilation team as well. So I've, I've seen both sides of it, and they both have really, really amazing mechanics that I want to put together into one game. And I'm going to tell you about some of those now. So the first scene we see here is the huge ancient, ancient ones. We call this guy the Harbinger. And one of the things we're doing is this Harbinger is kind of like your commander in an Annihilation game. But it's also kind of like your command center in a, in a Command and Conquer game. So he's the first unit you'll get. He's doing, you can order them around. You can tell them, uh, you'll give them special abilities or they'll have special abilities to build things. So they're kind of your starting unit. Uh, we're going mobile like a commander in an Annihilation game, not a structure like in a Command and Conquer game. And I kind of see it that as the game plays on, um, these things will have special abilities. Like if you've played uh, the later Command and Conquer games like Generals and Red Alert 3 and those kind of names, you have these superpowers that you get and those will be tied to your Harbinger. In this scene, you'll also see a little helicopter pilot. And one of the things we really are looking forward to doing is there's always an announcer in, a, in an RTS game telling you what's going on. Hey, I, you, this unit has been discovered. This thing's happening over there. And this, and what we want to do is we want to take this helicopter pilot, and he's kind of like a traffic reporter. And he's reporting on the traffic, and at the same time, this big apocalypse is happening. So instead of you know, saying, oh, this has been seen over there, you might get the traffic reporter saying, and there's a backup on the 405 because the Harbinger just showed up. So it, that kind of humor instilled with you know, the giving you information about how the game plays. Moving on, we have the machines. The machines Harbinger, this is the, we break out with the site of the first two Harbingers. And Harbingers kind of work, the machine Harbinger works the exact same way as, as the the ancient ones. You know, you'll start off with that unit, you'll have special abilities, you'll start building things. The entire front of that thing will open up. One of the really unique things about building this game, what we'd like to do, is asymmetrical factions. So they'll both play very, very differently. The machines are all about uh, deploying and being very mobile. So your Harbinger, you'll notice a lot of panels in there, and he'll actually be able to deploy and open up and Print, 3D print out basically units that you can go and he can print out a factory and the factory will walk around and, and transform and it can print out other units. Whereas the Harbinger the, on the ancient one side will just start and he'll summon some units and their buildings don't move. They're very, you know, single temples that you build. And we'll get into that more as that goes on. You'll see in this shot um, is kind of that startup of the base building of an RTS. So you'll see a for the ancient ones, you have the harbinger, the har I'm sorry, the harvester in the background. He's going to collect your humans, collect your resources. You'll see the um, the slime temple there, where the little frog dudes, which are your really basic infantry, will come out of. Those things can't move. Your harbinger is a very powerful unit, knocking stuff over. You'll see kind of the wonder. I'll get to that later. And then you'll see sort of the same thing with the um oh, wow. You'll see sort of the same thing with the techno side here, um, where 
they're also starting, we set up the shot to show you the base building. So in this shot here, you'll see that there's a, a factory deploying, and it's that whole concept of you build the factory and it's mobile, and it deploys and it builds the mobile units. All those little infantry guys can also deploy. They have a little panel in the front of them that when they deploy, they'll get a shield around them, so there's, the, the machines are all about deploying and undeploying, deployed state, they're a little stronger defensively, and undeployed, they're, they're very mobile. You'll see uh, one of the other uh, units on this screen too is the uh, harvester kind of node, and I'll get to that when we get to the actual harvesting in the game. In this next shot, you can kind of see how the units are coming out of the Ancient One's temple, and that's how they build their units. And here's a, a basic fight, a start of a fight between the two. And this shot, this is where it gets really interesting. This is uh, very much the asymmetrical difference in the game. This is, we're showing you how the, um, how the machines will harvest humans. So, and this, you'll see that you select them, you say harvest units, so these, these little harvester guys will go up to buildings and start pulling guys out of buildings, but you don't get the resources there. They actually have to return it, return those units to a node right there. If you look at the left side, the thing there, those harvester units will come and drop them off and put them inside that node, and that's when you'll get the resources. It's very Command and Conquer-esque at that point because you're sending out harvesters, they'll collect something and bring it back and put it in the harvesting node, and then you'll get this spike of resources. So your resources won't be a steady state like an Annihilation game, it'll be a Command and Conquer state because you go out, collect them, bring them back, and they'll spike, and then you use them all up, and then you won't have any until they go out, collect and bring it back, and you'll get another spike. Now, contrast that to the other side, uh, of the coin with the ancient ones. So because it's asymmetrical, it should work slightly differently. It gets you a completely different feel. And you'll see in this one, here's the ancient ones har harvesters. And what they do is they just walk around eating them. So they're eating the souls of the humans. And as it's collecting, you'll get them right away. You'll get that resource right away. So your resource generation will be much more even. You won't have these spikes. Um, don't worry about the balance. We'll work on the balance. We'll get it right. You know, we'll spend lots of time doing it. Balancing asymmetric factions is very difficult, but I have done it before, and other projects have done it before too. We'll figure that out absolutely. But yeah, that's that. That really, this part right here really shows the difference, the asymmetrical factions and how they differ. And any factions we have moving forward, we're going to continue that uh, idea of here's a new faction and it needs to play completely differently. Moving on, you'll see uh, kind of how things attack. The, so uh, the Ancient One's harvesters actually are able to attack. You'll notice that we actually intentionally left out the machine harvesters in this because the machine harvesters can attack. And you'll see that they're actually able to knock over buildings. That's intentional. Then we get to our big, our big hero shot of one of our big units. So I plan on having, I would like to have a tech tree, like a Command and Conquer style game. Now, all this is in flux. This is what we'd like to do. I think details are going to change, but this is the main direction we want to go. So actually, actually tech up a little bit. We're going to have these giant scale units. And the engine that we've built for this game, for, that we used for Planetary Annihilation, allows us to have these really different big scales. Now, we have the little guys that are just a couple times bigger than a human, and we have these huge guys that show up and are like bigger than skyscrapers. Now, one of the big interesting questions that has happened is like, why does he shoot a building? Why does he shoot a building? Is that intentional? Yes, it looks really, really cool, and we love the cool factor. But one of the really interesting things that we want to set up in this game is because we have all these different scales of units, the little ones can easily walk in between the buildings, but these big guys can't. So they either need to knock them over or destroy them in order to get to the other side. So you have this opening up of the map. You'll start on off on either side with a big city in the middle, and you can only send your little units back and forth until you knock down some buildings, and you can send the bigger units until you knock down the buildings, and then really big units until you knock down all the buildings, then you can finish the game. So you get this nice big kind of escalation of warfare, which is really great for these type of games. And again, you'll see the same sort of thing with uh, our, our guy we call the Nug. And you also see that we're going to have, you know, special abilities in some of our units. Our, our last game was very much this one unit does this one thing and that's it. But I want to instill a lot of personality in all the units. So they're they're going to have uh, 
voice responses when they tell them to move when you select them. They're, they're gonna, you're gonna have special abilities. And one of the special abilities you really want is for these big units to be actually able to pick up a building and use it as a club. Now is it gonna end up exactly like this in the game? I don't know. It's gonna be very close. We wanna use them as clubs. Whether he picks it up and walks around with it until the first time it hits or you actually target it like in the video or something else we haven't thought of yet. Uh, it's still yet to be determined, but we are gonna use buildings as, as clubs because it's really cool. So then the next thing I want to talk about is this this laser cutter unit that's really interesting is that um, because we can do all these things with the engine, we can actually cut the entire shard in half and leave the gaming hole and we want to use that as kind of you know big end game units. And then finally, we have the summoning of the deity, which is kind of like a wonder in Age of Wonders. So the game will end, and it's one way of, of ending the game besides just wiping out the other side. And that's basically how we hope to see the gameplay of human, uh, human resources playing. Sorry. And we hope you like it. Please back us on Kickstarter.